marijuana. And now to break it all down, we've got Rick Tyler, Republican strategist and MSNBC political analyst, Christina Greer, professor of political science at Fordham University, and Joel Benenson, former Hillary for America senior campaign strategist. So, Rick, this is where the Republicans were four years ago. Uh, did the Democrats go too much at each other instead of Donald Trump, or is that inevitable when you have a field of this size? I think the most disturbing thing is they went after President Barack Obama more so than they did the President of the United States. And it seemed as though a lot of Democrats were very upset about that, that they weren't taking on the President. There are a few, there are a few who did, uh, but they were few and far between. And uh, Biden, of course, was Vice President under uh, Barack Obama. It does use Barack Obama's name quite a bit, and Cory Booker called him out for that. But that put them all in a very awkward uh, position of particularly on on on, on an immigration I, what I don't understand what Biden didn't answer is is although Barack Obama did have an what they say is a record number of, of deportations they changed the way they counted them they turned turnarounds into deportations that is people who were uh, caught at the border and immediately turned around that is that was never counted as a deportation and that probably accounts for the uh, high numbers and I don't know why he didn't bring that uh, to uh, the audience's attention. Well, let's talk a little bit about Joe Biden because the overall sense seems to be that he did what he needed but didn't wow anybody. Dana Milbank called him brilliantly and gloriously adequate. And Frank Bruni, writing in the New York Times, said while he was better prepared and more composed, quote, Biden hardly put the doubts about his sturdiness and stamina to rest. There's that way in which he trails off at the end of a sentence or an argument. All the little hiccups en route. The messy scenes connecting one thought to the next. The demeanor that falls into a maddening gray area between engaged and fully animated. If Booker and de Blasio traffic in too many exclamation points, Biden traffics in too many ellipses. Joel, what's your sense of that? And is that fair? Well, look, full, full disclosure for the audience, you mentioned Hillary. You know I was President Obama's poster and a strategist for him uh, from his campaigns through. Um, and I, I think what you saw last night was unfortunate. I think if there's any political strand, if candidate heard any strategist telling them that it was a good idea to attack President Obama, my advice to them would be fire the strategist. It is ridiculous in a Democratic primary what went on last night. Look, the other thing is the basic rule I've had, uh, and I've worked on now four presidential campaigns, is they're about big things, not small things. They're about the future, not the past. And they're about their lives, not your lives. And these folks are relitigating fights, looking like exactly what people don't like about Washington and it's why Congress has a far worse approval rating uh, right now even than President Donald Trump who's had a historically low approval rating for any sitting president I think people have to talk more about people's lives out there we're talking about and look also in full disclosure I've been advising Mayor Pete Buttigieg right but I think we have to talk about the, the, the situation that people are facing today incomes are not keeping up People are looking at the millennial generation. It will likely be the first generation that earns less than their parents. And yet, Christina, President Trump's biggest repetitive argument is, look how great the economy is. Look how great the stock market is doing. Was there an adequate response to what ultimately, whatever else is going on, somewhere in voters' mind, when I sit around my kitchen table, can I pay my bills? Can I afford to send my kid to college? Am I going to keep my job? Do I have a job? Right. And that was not articulated last night. And there's a fundamental difference between the economy and your pocketbook issues. And far too many Americans are really struggling. And they struggled under Obama. And they struggled under Bush and Clinton. And these are this is generational struggle that so many families across the country are going through. People in inner cities, people in suburbs, and people in rural areas. So last night when some of the candidates got into the weeds about Medicare and health care for all. Although incredibly important, that is not a direct pocketbook issue that was made um, a connection with the voters, per se, or people who are watching. And so they should have talked a lot more about not just the billions and trillions. We saw those numbers that, you know, lots of candidates were throwing out. But how would that explicitly affect you as either a single parent or a working person or, you know, certain candidates like to use the term working class or a union member? That articulation and connection sort of fell flat. And this is why I think we can explain why Andrew Yang is still on the stage. You know, some people were confused. It's because he presents himself as and a Washington outsider. And it's very outsider. clear, right? Thousand bucks. You're going to get a thousand yeah. bucks. But having said that, because it sounds like you think that the Democrats have failed 
To some extent, does that mean that they've handed a victory to President Trump because he's giving oh, no. them no. a Oh, I'm sorry. No, and I don't no. think I don't think they're all failing. I think, for example, I mentioned Pete Buttigieg. I think he made a very compelling case that we are running out of time as a country, and if we don't start dealing with the crisis of climate change, that there'll be in 10 years, you know, 100 million more guns on our streets. How long are we going to wait to deal with these? We can't afford to. So I think he's laying out a different kind of argument, and he's not engaging in some of the back and forth over what's happened in the last 20 years in Washington. He's spending more time talking about what we need to do in the next years for the country. Yeah, and I think this is why also primaries are important. This is a way for candidates to really articulate a clearer vision. And not everyone's going to make it to the next but, debate. And that's take right. Some of their ideas from, you know, uh, um, certain governors had some interesting ideas. Like last night, Governor Inslee had some really interesting ideas. I don't think he's going to make it to the next debate. But his important sort of dialogue about climate change will be adopted by Harris or Booker or Biden or Buttigieg or whoever makes it to Well, that's Warren the other thing that you hear a lot of complaining about, that this format, Joel, doesn't allow for the real exchange. Then, is that the problem or is the problem that, uh, look, any politician worth his, worth his or her salt knows you can answer a question any way you want. So if you want to get your information out there, right. watch Inslee do this. You can ask him a question about the price of beef and he's going to talk about climate change. First listen to debate prep is every question is an opportunity for you to drive your message. That's number one. But let's talk about the format for a second. We're looking at 10 candidates on stage who are seeing the minute by minute of how much each candidate spoke. They get to speak 18 minutes if they're at the top of the list. Think about what we're talking about. We, watched, we were on air last night for two hours and 20 minutes, and the most any candidate gets to speak is 18 minutes. So I don't know how else you could deal with it better when you've got 20 candidates in a field. We'll see, I think, when it slims down in September. Uh, I think we'll see a little more uh, substance, a little more uh, time given to each candidate. Hopefully we don't know what it'll slim down to at that point, but the format complicates it. And that's not a criticism of either networks that have had to handle it. I don't think anybody has had a better solution. All right, let me... Uh